Have you ever wondered how your stress impacts not only your genetics, but how it may impact your children's genetics? Hello, my six full and healthy earthlings. Mihaela Ragush here, naturopath and founder of the Natural Health Podcast. In this episode today, you're going to learn just how stress may impact your genes. We're going to go through and talk about stress and your genetics. Then we're going to talk about how your stress can impact your children's genetic. And at the end, like I always do, I'm going to provide you with three tips to manage your stress and at the end of this episode i'm also going to give you the opportunity to join a health and success oriented community by clicking below and joining the natural health newsletter Welcome to the Natural Podcast, where we bring awareness to sustainable health in a business hustle space. Natural Podcast is perfect for the high-performing business-minded individuals who want to work with their biochemistry to achieve success and optimal health. It's Mondays with Mahela. That's right, me. Thank you so much for tuning in. I absolutely love, love, love and appreciate your support. On Mondays, I'm here to provide you simple savvy and sustainable health hacks to optimize your health. And like I said, in today's episode, we're talking about something so exciting. Well, you know what? I read this study and I got so excited about it because we're going to be talking about genetics. I know, fancy, right? And we're talking about stress. Who would have thought that being stressed out may impact your genetics, right? But let's go look into it. Let's look at stress and genetics. So genes, our genetics, they actually have memories, which is which just blows my mind, right? These memories are of past environmental conditions that in turn affects their expression even after these conditions have changed. So let's think about it. So for example, an environmental condition may be smoking, right? So if you are currently smoking or have smoked in the past, this may have affected the expression of certain genetics. And even though you have stopped, this may have impacted some of your genetics. It doesn't mean they get switched off straight away. And therefore, in turn, it can impact your children or your, you know, your, your bloodline. So the thing is, is it's so interesting, this topic. And, you know, research has discovered that genes in mice exposed to chronic stress changes over time. Modifications were, were most associated with genes related to a variety of mental illnesses, such as depression, autism, uh, autism spectrum disorder and schizophrenia that is mind-blowing so any individuals or yourself that you may know who have autism who may have schizophrenia or depression um yeah that in in mice it's been shown that um being exposed to chronic stress has impacted these right who would have thought the interesting thing is we have to look back at history to understand how things are impacting us right now, let's look back in history. And I came across an amazing, um, it wasn't amazing at the time. In 1944, the Dutch famine, right? If you've ever heard about it, right? It was a terrible time in the Netherlands um, with around 4.5 million people affected and relied on soup kitchens after food supplies were stopped from getting into the area by German blockages, right? So, as many as 22,000 people were thought to have died, and those who suffered will find it extremely difficult to ever fully recover. So it was a pretty hectic time back in 1944 with this Dutch famine. But why am I talking about this? Because that created stress, right? So let's have a look at what happened, right? L listen to this. This, is, this blew my mind. Okay. The dietary intake of people in affected areas was reduced from a healthy 2,000 calories to 580. So... People were getting 2,000 calories a day, and now because of this famine, they were getting 580, right? So unsurprisingly, without a balanced, without a balanced diet, children born to mothers who were pregnant during the famine showed a much lower than average birth, right, birth weight, right? But then, then apparently something really strange happened, right? So their children's children, so let's get that right. So the mum was in the famine, had a child, and these other kids that we're talking about now had the same low birth weight despite their mother's normal food and calorie intake. Okay, so what does that mean? So the mum, so the grandma in this case, was involved in a Dutch famine, had gave birth to the mum who was low weight, and then that mum gave birth to that child, and now that child was also low birth weight, even though that mum was eating enough calories, right? So 
On top of that, daughters of women exposed to the Dutch famine were twice as likely to develop schizophrenia than the usual calculator risk. You know, so the question is, what was happening, right? This is where I'm, I'm, I'm trying to paint a picture for, for us to understand the effects of stress on our genetics, but not only our genetics, which I've spoken about so many times, on your kids and maybe even their kids' genetics. So whatever you're doing right now, to your DNA, to your genes, what you're exposing yourself to is not only impacting you. So, you know, when people go, I want to be healthy, I want to be healthy. Yes, be healthy for yourself too. But if you're healthy, you're actually also being healthy for your kids and their kids, right? Because it's not just our genes and DNA that determines our health. But also environmental factors, you know, diet, stress, lifestyle choices, uh, just like in the famine that I spoke about, many organisms display transgenerational plasticity where the memory of parental exposure to stress alters later life cellular responses and survival mechanisms of their offspring, right? How epigenetic changes uh, that occur during parental life are maintained to affect later life psychology is unclear but yes it may be unclear at the moment or some individuals might go it's so clear and they know exactly how it's happening i thought i'll introduce this podcast but just talking a little bit about stress and genetics but introducing this famine the aspect of what happened and i'm pretty sure there's so many other historical um you know historical events that occurred that are similar to this that have impacted individuals right but Let's look at, can your stress impact your kids' genetics? I believe you're kind of thinking, uh, well, Mahela, you just said they can, right? But let's look into it. This is, this is the basis of this podcast, came from this study. This study was um, released on the 13th of October, 2021, in Molecular Cell. And essentially, biologists at the University of Iowa found that, so the, the study wasn't done on humans, that's what I want you to know. The one that we spoke about, and the Netherlands and the Feminine was clearly humans, right? But this one was done on round worms. Um, so you might be like, oh, it's got nothing to do with humans. But let me let me go into I already set the scene that it does affect um, our kids. But let, let's look into this, right? Uh, they looked at round worm mothers subject to heat stress past under certain conditions and through modifications to their genes, the legacy of the stress exposure, not only to the offspring, but even to the offspring's children, okay? They essentially looked at how a mother's roundworm react, reacts when she senses danger, such as the change in temperature. So they essentially put them under temperature stress, right? Which can be harmful or even fatal to some animals. So it's kind of like, for us, I guess, it's kind of like, what, not getting enough food or some type of stress or financial stress and things like that, right? So in a, in, in a study published last year, um, 2020, the biologists discovered that mother roundworm released serotonin when she sensed danger. The serotonin traveled from her central nervous system to warn her unfertilized egg. So, so if women out there listening, imagine how many unfertilized eggs you have, right? Okay, let's keep going. Where the warning is stored, okay, stored there, so to speak, and then pass to offspring after conception. So examples of such genetic cascades, so I'm reading from the study, um, cascades around even in, in humans. Uh, studies have shown that pregnant women affected by the famine in the Netherlands, which I t- spoke about earlier in 1944 to 1945, known as the Dutch hunger winter, gave birth to children who were influenced by the episode as adults with higher rates of average of... So, okay, so this is saying, confirming it, that they had higher rates of schizophrenia, diabetes and obesity, right? So in this study that I'm talking about now, the biologists wanted to find out how the memory of stress exposure stored in egg cells. How crazy is that, right? They were like, okay, cool. Not cool, but hey, look, it gets stored in egg cells, but how? Right? And this is where it gets a little bit, you know, sciencey, technical, but stick through it with me and we'll make sense of it. So what they did is they exposed mother roundworms to unexpected stresses and found the stress memory was in, ingrained in the mother's egg through the actions of a protein called heat shock transcription factor, or they call it HSF1. And it's also it's present in all plants and animals and is activated by changes in temperature and other stresses. So the team found out that this particular HSF1 recruits another protein 
um, an enzyme called histidone 3 lysine 9 um, methyl transferase the latter normally acts during my mybrogenesis to silence genes and raise the memory of the prior activity which is key to silence genes and raise the memory right however what they observed was something else right they found that this HSF1 collaborates with the mechanisms that normally act to reset the memory of a gene expression during embryogenesis, instead establish distress memory. Okay, so let's go back. Let's make sense of this of this science. Okay, so essentially what happens is, um, what's supposed to happen is that this protein that's found in all animals uh, is stressed out and then you have this enzyme which is supposed to silence genes and erase the memory okay but this is saying that they uh, they found that the collaborates with the mechanism that normally acts as a reset memory function during levels instead established distress memory so instead of resetting it the memory was planted in which we do not want okay one of these newly silenced G's encodes the insulin receptor. If you've heard me talk before, you know exactly what I talk about when I say insulin, right? Which is this, which is central to metabolic changes such as diabetes, obesity, and so forth. When there was silence, alters an animal's psychological metabolism and stress resilience. Alters their metabolism and stress resilience. Because these silencing markers persisted in offsprings their stress response strategy was switched from one that dependent on the ability to be highly responsive to stress to relying instead on mechanisms that decrease stress responsiveness but provided long-term protection from stressful environments okay what what they found the most remarkable was that the mother was exposed to stress for a short period of time only probably that developed from her germ cells that were subject to the stress in utero had the memory the progeny of these so so the mother's grandchildren had lost this memory however if the mother was subject to a longer period of stress the grandchildren generational retained this memory somehow the dose of maternal stress exposure is recorded in the population so this is kind of saying like it's also dose dependent right this is uh, another part under the study which is saying that you also if it was just an acute stress or if it was prolonged stress i guess the longer the more the stress the more it would impact these genes and these proteins and so forth but essentially what this is all saying is that if you're stressed right now um, i know there was a lot of science and a lot of blabbing on and things like that but let's wrap it up is if you're stressed right now, yes, it's impacting you, yourself. Uh, it's impacting your metabolic system. It's impacting your immune system, your sleep. It's impacting maybe even your happiness. It may be triggering some genes that you don't really want to trigger, right? Yes, it's impacting you, but it's also impacting your unfertilized eggs, right? If you're a female, talk to females out there who still have a menstrual cycle. So if your eggs are being affected that means your biological kids are being affected, right? So yes, here it is, I'm telling you that if you're stressed out, your stress does get passed on to your kids. So a mother's stress does impact the kids' genes and genetics. And from what we've seen, um, you know, it can impact such things as schizophrenia, autism obesity metabolic disorders like diabetes and so forth um, and in addition to that you can just think about maybe even depression anxiety i haven't read studies on that but i'm just thinking about the mechanisms so when they say it runs in your family this actually may run in your family and the trigger of this may be stress you know so you know it would be smart to sit down with your biological mother, father, whoever it is, and um, in this sense, mother, and talk to them and say, you know, what have you been through life? What has happened? Has there been any stressful events in your life that have occurred? And and then and then you can even draw like a little timeline and you know talk to their mums, um, your grandma, and so forth, and ask that information, you know, to figure out what's happened. But let's go into three tips to manage your stress. Number one that I always talk about is sleep, right? Even if you have an acute episode of a stressful event, sleep 
is going to assist you to deal with stress it's going to help you regulate your stress response and it's also going to help you regulate your genetic expression sleep is absolutely necessary number two is lower your inflammation right because if we have ongoing internal in our body inflammation that's increasing our stress right we may not think about it that it is but a hundred percent is if you have any inflammation it's definitely contributing to your stress and when i spoke about stress today i didn't just mean physical stress it can be perceived stress it could be also health stress such as inflammation number three is balance your sympathetic nervous system Sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems need to be balanced. Uh, we couldn't live without the other, but it doesn't mean that we have to spend most of our time in our sympathetic nervous system. We need to, you know, take that deep breath, let life be, sit in the sun, enjoy our times, friends, family, socializing, whatever, whatever it means for you to be in a parasympathetic mode. For some people, maybe, you know, going for a walk, some people might be sitting there, some people to yoga, some people to socializing, reading a book, whatever that is for you, find that and continue doing that. So there you go. What an interesting topic I had for you guys today, all about genetics and stress and how it can impact maybe your unborn kids. So if you ever think about having kids, this is something to consider, right? So look, do what you do best. Love, like, share the natural health podcast. And if you want to join a health and success oriented community, click below and join the natural health newsletter where every Friday, in your inbox, you will receive discounts to some products that we may have, uh, to some materials from our guests that they're giving you exclusive materials to or discounts straight into your inbox. This newsletter is made just for you, not for me. There you have it. And remember the missing link between failure and success is your health. Content and information provided here is opinion of Mahela Raguse and is for information purposes only and does not constitute medical advice. It is not intended to provide medical advice or take the place of medical advice or any current treatment you're undertaking. Consult your own medical professionals for any medical issues that you may be having. This entire disclaimer also applies to any guests or contributors to the Natural Health Podcast. It is advised that you consult your doctor or healthcare professional in relation to any health concerns you may be having. Mahela Raguse does not take responsibility for any health consequences which occur from a person listening, viewing, or reading this content. And in a circumstances, Circumstances shall the natural podcast, Mahela Raguse, any guests or contributors to the natural podcast, or any employees, associates, or affiliates of Mahela Raguse be responsible for damages arising from the information provided on the natural podcast. By listening to this podcast, you agree not to use this podcast as medical advice to treat any medical conditions in either yourself or others. Please note if you're taking prescription, do not stop your medication or start a new protocol, including but not limited to supplements diet lifestyle changes without consulting a doctor or healthcare professional. If you or any person has a medical concern, you should consult with your healthcare provider or seek other professional medical advice. Never disregard professional medical advice or delay in seeking it because of something that you have read or heard on the natural podcast or in any linked materials. If you think you may have a medical emergency, call your doctor or emergency services immediately. Neither Mahela Raguse nor the publisher of this contact takes responsibility for the possible health consequences of any person or persons reading or listening or following the information in educational content.